Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a quiz review for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 10, Life's Final Chapter. The first question in this one is, why may individuals facing death choose a hospital setting during the process of dying? Choices are A, it provides the best resources for pain management. B, people remain hopeful that they can avert death. C, most homes are not equipped with the appropriate medical equipment. Or D, the emotional pain of dying is mitigated in a clinical setting. Well, um, I, well, yeah, D is kind of a funny one. Um, the pain management can happen actually best with hospice. Uh, and that can happen at home. Um, no, it turns out that a lot of people choose a hospital because they think that somehow they're going to not die if they go to the hospital. Um, and again, hospitals can do a huge amount, but if you're faced with a uh, severe chronic illness that you're going to, excuse me, not a chronic illness, a terminal illness, you're going to die. And um, by this point, uh, those efforts have been made already. Number two, how does hospice care differ from hospital care for a dying patient, aside from the fact that it's got, you know, fewer letters? Um, a, the family is in charge of making many decisions for the patient. B, the focus is on the patient and the family. C, physicians are not part of the hospice team. Or D, the focus is on psychological well-being and not pain management. Well, with hospice, that's all about making a graceful exit. And um, in this particular case, the focus is on the patient and the family. Again, it's not on the medicine. It's not on trying to you know rescue the person, make them better. It's about addressing the needs for these relationships and helping the person uh, die as painfully, as gracefully, as well as possible. Question number three. The word euthanasia literally means what? Life beyond, peaceful passing, mercy killing, or good death? Well, I think I've said it like four times in the past few videos, and the answer is it is literally good death. The U, E-U is good, and thanasia, as in thanatos, is death in Greek. And uh, so, good death. Question number four, what is true of terminally ill patients' attitudes towards physician-assisted suicide? The majority of patients say that they support physician-assisted suicide in general. Again, we're talking about terminally ill patients' attitudes. A small majority of patients have seriously considered physician-assisted suicide for themselves. Patients 65 or older are more likely to have seriously contemplated physician-assisted suicide, or those who have had around-the-block care we're less likely to consider physician-assisted suicide. Well, again, we're talking about, these are the people who are for whom this is directly relevant, terminally ill patients. What do they think? And their answer is that they generally support it. And, and I think that's an important thing because I think in general, decisions should be made by the people for who are affected by something. Um, and in this case, the people who are most affected by it are the people who are terminally ill. And so the majority of them are in favor of it. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Question number five. What is the leading cause of death for individuals 85 and older? Well, we saw a table on this in the lecture video. The choices are heart disease, cancer, chronic respiratory disease, or stroke. Now, cancer is, a very, is the number one cause um, in the uh, 60s and 70s, but when you get to 85 and older, then what's going to happen is it's going to be heart disease, if that ever shows. There we go, heart disease. That's number one for 85 and older because, again, my theory is that most of the people who are going to die of cancer have died already. Question number six. A period of time after the death of a loved one, during which a person expresses grief and may follow rituals, such as the wearing of black clothing, is referred to as what? Mourning? woefulness, bereavement, or anguish. I like, I like the willfulness one. Um, you know, what's funny is we, we talk about bereavement um, as a process, but the, in this particular time, uh, the period of time here, uh, we're, we're specifically talking about mourning, that you mourn the loss. And um, so you may want to go and back and distinguish that one from bereavement uh, so you get rid of the test. Question number seven. In Japan, how do Buddhists celebrate the Bon Festival, or more often Obon Festival, to celebrate the departed spirits of their ancestors? By praying in solace, by visiting with family, by donating to charity, or by fasting? 
Well, a very common one actually is visiting with family, or you can also go up to Salt Lake for the Obon Festival and there's a uh, dancing um, and it's a big party. Um, but visiting with family is a common way of celebrating or honoring the departed spirits of the ancestors. Number eight, one description of the stages of grief for coping with bereavement is as follows. Shock numbness, yearning searching, disorganization, despair, and reorganization. Who proposed these? So whose theory is this? Whose stages are these? Your choices are Bowlby, Kevorkian, Masajewski, or Jacobs. <laughs> I like the Kevorkian, the uh, Dr. Death is in there. No, he would not be the correct answer. The one that you're looking for right here is actually uh, John Bowlby. Uh, the same guy who talked about uh, infant attachment to caregivers uh, also did this uh, significant theory about bereavement uh, for people who have lost somebody to death. Question number nine. One description of the stages of grief for, for coping with bereavement is as follows. Numbness, disbelief, separation, distress, that's yearning, anger, anxiety, depression, mourning, and recovery. Who proposed these? Well, it wasn't Bowlby because he was the answer to the last one. So there's Bowlby, there's Kevorkian, the, the uh, doctor who helps people commit suicide. Masajewski or Jacobs? Well, by process of elimination, we are left with two choices, and in this case, it's going to be Selby Jacobs, who proposed this theory, which is closely related to Bowlby's. There's, there's important similarities, uh, but that's the one who came up with that. Last question. Last quiz for the last chapter. Sal lost his wife a month ago. He confides in his best friend Artie that he isn't sure he'll ever get over the loss of his wife. As an expert in the bereavement process, what would you tell Sal? So we're assuming that you were the expert in bereavement. What would you tell him? Try to spend some time away from others to clear your thoughts. Wake up each morning and say, my wife would want me to move on. Join a bereavement support group to share your experiences or don't be embarrassed to ask your primary care physician for sedatives to help you cope. Well, um, a lot of ways of dealing with this. Some of them are more functional than others. Uh, but probably a good one in this particular case would be for Sal to join a bereavement support group. It, when you lose somebody, one of the most uh, significant things is that you feel very alone. And it can be so helpful to find other people in a similar situation who are able to support one another. Um, and so a bereavement support group can be a wonderful thing to do. And with that, we're going to finish the quiz, the chapter, and the course. This is uh, Bart Polson signing out from Lifespan Development. Thanks for joining me.